Jesus Rafael Soto, whose kinetic compositions have won him worldwide renown, is one of the leading figures in contemporary art. His work consists of visual concepts in which optical vibrations are produced by movement on the part of the viewer. In one such concept, T-shaped metallic rods are placed against a striped background. The lines blend, vanish, and reappear before the eyes of the spectator. Seeing the artist at work in his Paris studio, one might be reminded of an alchemist pursuing in the shadows of his laboratory the will of the wisp of creating gold. Soto, however, in a reverse of that process, transmutes solid matter into an aerial illusion. The square, the only geometric form not to be found in nature, loses stability when viewed against the striped background, taking on elements of changeableness and movement. Soto calls another of his concepts writings. As the spectator alters his stance, symbols appear and disappear, creating a constantly changing text. While Soto's work can be called neither sculpture nor painting, it partakes of both and adds a fourth dimension, that of time-space. By using wire attached to nylon thread, he advances in the process of eliminating solid form. The square here becomes a mere idea. Instead of being painted on solid ground, it exists only in space. The mind's eye perceives it as if by magic, as it registers on the spectator's retina. Materialization is carried to the extreme in the work Soto calls penetrables. Here it is not only form that disappears, but also human presence. The viewer enters into the work and becomes one with it, constituting, as it were, an element in the composition. Soto has produced what are called multiples, works in a numbered series, each signed by the author, after the fashion of engravings. Here we see one entitled Cube, which undergoes continual metamorphosis as the viewer moves from one position to another. As rays of light play upon it, plexiglass prisms break them into a rainbow of color. This other cube is the model for a monument to iron, to be erected in Guayana, a region rich in ferrous deposits. This one, for the Caracas subway system, will oscillate over a fixed structure entitled Yellow Progression. Soto's work has been analyzed in a book illustrated in highly original fashion by another prominent kinetic artist, Carlos Cruz Diez. The author of the text, the critic and historian Alfredo Bulton says, in Soto's work, for the first time in the history of art, space becomes a basic element of composition. Before Soto, painting consisted in a static canvas hanging on a wall. Soto's work is a pictoric, plastic creation that engulfs the spectator into its environment, an environment which thus becomes peopled and filled with creative possibilities. Prior to Soto, space did not possess an importance of this kind. Soto was born in 1923 in the wilderness area of Venezuela known as Guayana, In 
in Ciudad Bolívar on the bank of the Orinoco River, one can still see his birthplace and the house in which he spent his childhood. As a boy, he earned money by street vending and painting advertising posters for local movie houses and shop signs. One of the latter still survives. At 19, he left for Caracas, the capital of Venezuela, with a small scholarship for the study of painting. Stepping through the door of the art school for the first time, Soto was struck at once by a brack standing on an easel. He had never before seen a cubist painting, or an easel either for all that matter. Soto's early exercises reflect the impact of this first encounter. He interpreted the Venezuelan landscape in terms of flat plains after the fashion of Cezanne rather than the impressionist style favored by the academy. After receiving his teaching certificate from the School of Plastic Arts, Soto moved to Maracaibo where he found himself in a totally new environment. Inspired by the colorful sights of the market and the shimmering waters of the lake, from which rose a forest of oil rigs, he immediately set about preparing an exhibition for Caracas, his first. The catalog of the show carried the portrait of Soto by Carlos Cruz Diez, a fellow artist who already shared Soto's leanings. Soto took an active role as director of the School of Painting in Maracaibo. His own work at the time revealed a great admiration for Van Gogh, though later he was to admit he had not fully understood the movement the Dutch artists represented. Soto was beginning to realize that painting also involved scientific and conceptual analysis. Desde la Escuela de Artes Plásticas yo me planteé la historia de la, de la plástica, de la pintura, Ever since I was in art school, I have thought of art history and the creation of painting in terms of research. While art is generally viewed as a mode of expression, for me, it is a form of knowledge. Above all, it is understanding, the understanding of phenomena, not merely natural phenomena, but phenomena in general. Thus, for me, the Impressionist adventure was of prime importance. I think of the Impressionists as scientific artists. Next came Cezanne and Cubism. By way of Malevich, Mondrian and the Constructivists, I arrived at the problem of space-time and set about trying to create multi-dimensional space. Feeling the need to further his development by working in one of the world's great art centers, at the age of 27, Soto left Maracaibo for Paris. He arrived with only $10 in his pocket, but fortunately he also had a guitar, which was to help with his living expenses for the next 12 years. His first encounter in Paris was with a group of fellow countrymen known as the Dissidents, because of their rebellion against Venezuela's artistic tradition. Soto did not join their ranks, however, preferring to paint on his own. Of this period, Soto wrote to his friends in Maracaibo. Paris, like all new experiences, presents one with crises that only time can resolve. I feel better now, after undergoing overwhelming sensations and tremendous shocks for three months, Painting here is 30 years ahead of me. You can imagine how fast I'll have to move to catch up. But that's the good thing about Paris. Here, time moves at the speed one wants. I'm now taking my first steps in painting. Working with two sheets of plexiglass and taking the dot as his basic element, he sought to bring about a dynamic sensation of movement. Unsuccessful at first, he eventually discovered that by separating the two sheets, a little from one another, the effect of movement was achieved by optical illusion as the viewer changed his visual angle. Carrying this idea farther, Soto constructed what he called the Villanueva box, in which three sheets of plexiglass, two inches apart, 
produced both a feeling of movement and an effect of volume. this time he became acquainted with Marcel Duchamp's optical machine, a creation which made a great impression on Soto, who was convinced that the effects it produced could only be achieved without the use of a motor. He continued his experiments in one of which, called spiral, two sheets of plexiglass were separated by a distance of 10 inches. This composition was to constitute the point of departure for his work thereafter. Jean Clay, a French critic, analyzes it thus. Spiral is a work of capital importance, in which Soto resolves the problem of simultaneously incorporating new elements into the work of art. It was at this point that Soto began to speak in an artistic language entirely his own. Soto had never before come so close to attaining his objective of the methodical destruction of all stable form, the molecular breakdown of solids, the dissolution of volume. Soto continued to experiment with plexiglass without ever exhausting its possibilities. By adding color, he heightened the illusion of movement produced by the changing position of the spectator. He also multiplied the number of sheets of plexiglass. The resulting works are no longer to be seen against a wall, but are to be viewed from all sides as three-dimensional sculptures. Moving on from work in plexiglass, Soto began to experiment with the moiré effect, the changes that take place when certain designs and shapes mingle with similar ones in their proximity. He no longer drew painted lines on plexiglass. Their place was taken by metal rods. These rods, placed against the background of stripes of the same width, interact in such a way that they seem to lose their material being. The film Vibrations, made in Paris in 1958, belongs to this period. Soto was awarded the National Prize for Painting in Venezuela in 1960. About this time, he set himself the challenge of creating a harmonious work of art from the most heterogeneous of objects to be found in junk heaps.
This work corresponds to what Bolton calls Soto's Baroque period. Forms are no longer so rigid or geometric, and there is a looser relationship among them. Here, the great freedom of the foreground contrasts with the severity of the background, with its uniform parallel stripes. Hélène, Soto's wife and constant companion, aids him in his tedious task of drawing the lines. During this period, Soto sought to show that even the most unlikely of elements can serve creative purposes, so long as they are fully controlled by the artist's perception. This mural is the property of the National Gallery of Art of Venezuela. Once he had proved his point, Soto returned to more orderly ways, picking and choosing among elements, the simplest of which proved the best suited to his purposes. This economy of means imparts a great degree of universality to his work. By placing rigid rods at some distance from a fixed background, the artist creates an oscillating sculptural relief. As each rod is added, the work takes on increasing life, shimmering like a breeze-blown pond. A similar effect is achieved with graphic symbols made of wire. They are like drawings from the hand of the artist, drawings hanging in space. As lines are gradually added to the background, this symbol breaks down into new forms which in turn will suffer still further metamorphoses, endless in their variety. Soto calls these works writings, owing to the resemblance of the wire shapes to calligraphic signs. Toward the end of the 60s, Kinetic art began to assume increasing importance in Europe, the first exhibition featuring the tendency being organized by the Museum of Modern Art in Paris. Frank Popper, a French critic and historian, treated the leading figures of the movement, Soto among them, in a book he called The Birth of Kinetic Art. Dancer Sonia Sanoja used some of the works Soto had on exhibit at the Denise René Gallery as scenery for a contemporary ballet. After producing the metallic structures which Bolton called pre-penetrables, Soto felt the need to bring about a more obvious fusion of spectator and composition. It was thus that he came to create the great penetrable which stands in the Municipal Museum of Amsterdam. Bolton declares that, seeking the integration of man with art, Soto conceived of a form in which the process could be fully realized. The traditional role of the viewer as a non-participating spectator is reversed. Instead, he becomes the center around which the work of art revolves. By this time, Soto was recognized as one of the most important artists in Europe.
Paris Museum of Modern Art presented an exhibit dedicated to his work, the main feature being an immense penetrable placed in the square before the building. of Pampatar was created by Soto for a private collector who lives on the Venezuelan island of Margarita. Bolton says that from the moment of entry the viewer is affected by and affects in turn the space and the atmosphere by which he is surrounded. No one before Soto had achieved an identification of this type. Soto's work constitutes a new human experience. Entrance into this forest of filaments is like plunging into the primeval jungle, the depths of the sea, or a blinding rain. It is a great moment when man feels the euphoria of total integration with time and finds his body physically one with a work of art. This penetrable is one of the most important works belonging to the Museum of Ciudad Bolívar. Erected in Soto's birthplace in 1973, it bears the artist's name. In its collection, works dating from the various period of his development find a place alongside compositions by many of the most representative figures in modern abstract art. Mondrian, Malevich, Arp, De Vazn, Man Ray, and Vasarelli, to name but a few. The museum was designed by the architect Carlos Raúl Villanueva, it is equipped with a sound system which permits one to hear a continuous performance of Cromo Vibraphonia, a composition of Antonio Esteves. An interesting parallel is thereby established between contemporary music and plastic art. In the garden of the museum, one finds sculptures by the Italian Berto Lardera, by Soto himself, and segments of a sphere by the Swiss Herbert Distel. The Guggenheim Museum of New York presented a retrospective exhibit of Soto's work, in which the place of honor was assigned to an immense penetrable. This exhibit traveled afterwards to the Hirshhorn Museum in Washington, where it was the first one-man show ever displayed in that institution. Not since the celebrated mobiles of Alexander Calder had the United States public the opportunity to view a work so original and changeable in character. It was confronted with a totally new concept of space. We have a very different idea of space from that of the Renaissance. Space for Renaissance man was what he saw before him. In its regard, he was both spectator and judge. Thanks to recent scientific research, it has become possible to show that man does not stand face to face with space, but instead stands immersed in it. In creating the penetrables, I sought not merely to produce a sensation of weightlessness, but also to show man that he is surrounded by space and forms one of its parts. This is the feeling of a person entering it, one of joy and gladness, as you see. It is the same sensation one has on plunging into a body of water, where, so to speak, one no longer feels the pull of the earth. Unquestionably, art and culture in general constitutes one of the pillars of civilization. Unfortunately, in our day, the attempt is made to assign it a position of marginal significance and to use the artist for non-artistic ends. This, I think, is a mistake of the first magnitude. 
The role of the artist is as important as that of the scientist or the politician. And I see no reason why science or politics should seek to deny the artist his right of invention. His talent is as meaningful as any other and equally useful to the community. Art is of great social value. If science contributes to a better life, if political measures bring about economic progress, art plays a major role in the area of feeling and spiritual communication. We artists are witnesses of all that goes on around us and consider our work contemporary in that it approximates closely contemporary scientific and philosophical research. Soto's concept of art as an integral element in modern life has been put into practice in the entrance hall he designed for the Renault automobile factory in Paris. Here, his theories have been incorporated into the building's architecture. As the doors are opened, they produce an effect of dynamic vibration. As the visitor passes by, the squares of the wall panel seem to oscillate. Vertical lines have been painted on both the columns and the wall in the background, against which a 40-foot writing stands out in relief. Even the ceiling has been taken into account, for from it hang 250,000 little rods. The kinetic artist has found a new means of identifying himself with the world. He does not wish to confine himself to the limited dimensions of a canvas and the small number of persons who come to view it. He wishes to move out into the world, into public places, where all can participate in his creation. Soto has attained total integration in this respect, but in order to achieve it, he was obliged to invent a new language which permits dialogue between empty space and the spectator. Soto has carried his man-centered intermingling of plastic art and architecture to a number of countries. For the Royal Bank of Canada building in Toronto, he created a vertical suspension composed of aluminum tubing. The variety of relationships among its elements offers an endless range of visual possibilities. The artist created another suspension for the Banavent Center in Caracas. Here, rods hang from a transparent roof, and the wind blowing through them gives an effect of music.
it is a perfect fusion of art with structure. Soto's composition is not a mere decoration, but an integral part of the building. Neither could be thought of without the other. Still another vertical suspension, this one in white and yellow, was created by Soto for the Rios Reina Concert Hall in Caracas. Once again, there is a perfect fusion of art and structure. The former city market of Paris has been replaced by the Place Babour, which daily draws thousands of visitors. Amid street spectacles of every sort, one approaches the Pompidou Center, a combination museum, library, and research center. It is one of the world's great art forums. Only artists of international renown have been invited to exhibit in its galleries. One of them was Soto, who created for the vestibule a hanging progression of great dimensions. Painters and musicians with an interest in Latin America celebrated the opening of the exhibit. Great black and white writings are featured in the main gallery, contrasting with the yellow and white vibrations of the extension located in the middle. In 1982, representative works by Soto were exhibited in Madrid at the Velázquez Palace, a short distance away from Picasso's celebrated Guernica. A few days before the opening, Soto paces restlessly through the great gallery, filled with works awaiting unpacking. He worries whether all will be ready in time. Some of the staff set up works along the walls, while others go about installing the plastic threads needed for the Madrid Penetrable. Soto supervises the operations, which proceed slowly. <laughs> the French critic Claude-Louis Renard has observed his patience is that of a man who has achieved self-realization little by little, that of an artisan who always takes time to test the quality of his materials and his tools. His tireless will enables him to find, without regard to cost, the human and material elements needed to advance his career. The great metal sphere, one of the most important pieces in the show, calls for careful assembly. The process of installation is almost complete. The poster is ready to go up on the streets of Madrid. And the catalog, with its handsome color reproductions, is now off the press. Once again, Soto will take public and critics alike by surprise.
The work shown here is a coherent composition which already occupies a place of fundamental importance in the evolution of modern art. It has been organized and developed on the basis of simple universal elements, rather like a fugue by Bach. As in the case of music, Soto's work is fundamentally immaterial. It is, after all, perceived sensation that constitutes the reality of the universe. Soto holds that my purpose in creating works of art is to reveal to others the phenomena I have discovered. The works entitled Ambivalences in Space Color are the great surprise of the exhibit in Madrid. The stark black and white of the squares Soto used earlier have given way to vivid color. Space is permeated by a spectrum previously absent from the artist's work. The effect is one of ambiguity. The squares seem to occupy different planes, but in reality they are equally distant from the viewer. The mysteries of color create the illusion of a false third dimension. These works constitute a tribute by Soto to Mondrian. He carries the Dutch painter's effort one step further by the addition of dynamic effects and an additional dimension. He resolves the two-dimensional problem with which Mondrian had wrestled in his works entitled Broadway and Victory Boogie Woogie. It is not uncommon for an artist to arrive at a point of stagnation in development. Such has not been the case with Jesus Soto, however. His research in the field of visual phenomena is never-ending. It keeps him ever fresh and up-to-date. This exhibit synthesizes all of Soto's artistic theories. Here, static elements acquire temporal values. Solid masses are transformed into concepts. Sculptures become hangings, which engage the spectator in constant dialogue. Volumes do not occupy space, but dissolve into it. Color ceases to be a pigment applied to a surface, undergoing the most unexpected of transmutations in space-time. This is the triumph of kinetic art. Heralded by Naum Gabo in the 1920s, it has been fully realized in the compositions of Soto. My concepts, says Soto, are not to be taken as mere optical games. On the contrary, they present a serious challenge to the eye, educating it to broaden its field of knowledge and to develop a level of perception that lies beyond the retina, in the depths of the spirit. Soto's work is evidence of something new in the world of art, a visual concept suggestive of reality, but not naturalistic in effect. There is, however, a strong link between Soto's work and nature. Natural phenomena are transformed by the artist's intuition and take on a new dimension. Soto has given us a new interpretation of space, time, and movement. His great contribution to art has been to create an ever-evolving spectacle, a continuing mutation of forms that die away only to be reborn, a labyrinth through which the viewer wanders with never-ending delight to both eye and spirit.